Before leaving, please remember to make a contribution to all of my uh, thousands of hours of work uh, uh, here, uh, PayPal, Patreon, or fundraiser in the description below or on the China Rising Radio Sinoland art article page. Thank you. Just a quick note before starting, I apologize for the green screen. I finally got my road mic. Um, and it's just, I've changed this little shoebox of a room up on the, up on the top floor of our house and, and using my daughter's gift of a light. She bought me a studio light, but clear, and I bleached the green screen behind me. It's not working. Uh, I look, I, you know, I look like I'm dissolving and, and I do apologize. I'm going to go tomorrow to call to a photo photography shop. I may have to wait until after the 19th because we're in total, you know, complete lockdown here, techno-fascist lockdown, and any essential and non-essential businesses are closed. But anyway, I'm going to get a new new green screen this one time. Please forgive me. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, Professor Ariel Alonso Perez, uh, who uh, is Cuban, just sent me a. Uh, an article that he wrote in Spanish, which I translated into English, entitled 40 Years After One of the Most Abominable USA Bioterrorism Attacks Against the Cuban People, Dungy Hemorrhagic Fever. Uh, he is a historical researcher and author of the book, The Biological War Against Cuba. I am doing a podcast reading of his article that I translated into English. I would like to point out to you in further reading at the bottom to check out the Bioweapon Truth Commission Global Online Library. It's the largest repo repository of free information, audio, visual, written, images, uh, movies, uh, everything, books, entire books. Uh, and I am a co-founder and, and the curator, the online curator. There's also a link for Dr. Um, uh, Ariel's Biological Warfare Against Cuba. He actually donated to the world the book in English. That's at the bottom. Click on that. And then another article, uh, two other uh, articles related uh, uh, Dr. Ariel. He uh, wrote me in last year, uh, about a year ago, about the what Cuba was doing with uh, and how they were dealing with COVID. And then there's an excellent article entitled Coronavirus Bio, Bio Warfare in Cuba by Thomas Powell. He's also a co-founder of uh, the uh, Bioweapon uh, Truth Commission's Global Online Library. There's an article there that he wrote that conclusively shows that not just this attack in 1981 uh, by the United States that devastated the island, but at least 10 or 12 more times after that the United States used uh, both bio biological warfare and entomological warfare. That's where you drop um, from an airplane insects that destroy crops. So I want you all to be cognizant of the fact that because of all of this, not to mention that when this happens, then the United States prevents Cuba from importing pesticides, larvicides, spraying equipment, you know, anti anti-biological warfare equipment. They do everything they can to kill as many people, genocidally kill as many Cubans as possible, uh, destroy the economy, and destroy uh, a successful example of a communist socialist country only 150 kilometers off the, off the coast of the U.S., and that's what it's all about. The United States, because of all of these incessant attacks with germs and with insects uh, over uh, decades, has caused, by some estimates, over $1 trillion in economic loss to Cuba. Can you imagine at least hundreds of billions? And can you imagine how Cuba would be today in terms of prosperity and lifestyle and quality of life in terms of 
um, the people having a more c comfortable uh, consumer, let's say, consumer lifestyle uh, without, if they had had those hundreds of billions of dollars uh, that w would have gone into the economy instead of trying to uh, be destroyed by the United States and its incessant biological and chemical uh, and uh, entomological warfare around the world. Uh, I will also go ahead and I just realized uh, Diliana Getanjiva just wrote a wonderful article and I will add that one too. She is uh, a, a, a a, a, an honor, a, a, what is it called? A, uh, a, I forgot. I guess, um, uh, Diliana Gaetanjiva is an honorable member of the Bioweapon Truth Commission. She does incredible work, and I've interviewed her too. Uh, and she points out just in a very recent article how the United States has hundreds of biological warfare laboratories all over the world that they are using to target, especially Russia and China, uh, by, the, by the boatload. If you think that SARS, the first SARS in 2002, was an accident or a, a mutation from nature, then you need to look at my, uh, you need to look at the uh, Bioweapon Truth Commission Global Online Library, and then you also need to look at my library that I created, and I'll, I'll also go ahead and add that at the bottom, the uh, COVID uh, library that I uh, put together. <clears throat> the uh, COVID, if you think COVID-19 is from some bat in a, in a cave in China, well then <clears throat> you, need to, you need to do your homework. It, um, it was definitely a biological warfare attack f by the United States on China back in 2019 at the World Military Games. And as and I learned in this article by Dr. Ariel that, uh, in fact, Fort Detrick has been uh, producing biological weapons and entomological weapons since the, after World War One. I. I thought it, they started after World War Two, but he offers a quote from a U.S. scientist uh, who actually worked. Uh, um, in biological warfare at, at, at Fort Detrick, and it was published in 1949. The United States has been going, has been trying to destroy its uh, enemies, anybody that is not a whore for U.S. empire. Uh, they have been trying to destroy their enemies with insects and bacteria and chemicals uh, since World War I. That's impressive. I, that's something I learned in this article. All right, shall we get busy? Thank you, Dr. Ariel, for sending this, and um, uh, I really, really appreciate it, and, and it'll give a chance for people outside of the Spanish-speaking world to have an, uh, an opportunity to uh, find out what uh, Western, and it's not just the United States. I'll, there's another article I wrote. I get, contributed a chapter from my book, China Rising. I'll add that one, too where I point out that the Western countries, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, all of them, all the NATO countries, all of them are happy to work with the United States in biological, chemical, and insect warfare, and they love it, and they participate actively with the United States, especially the UK at uh, Porton Down. All right, here we go. This month of May 2021 will mark 40 years since a terrible disease was diagnosed in Cuba, dengue stereotype 2 epidemic, and its variety hemorrhagic dengue that left an indelible mark of pain in our country. What elements and evidence came to light to denounce this as an aggression against the uh, Cuban people? This work tries to demonstrate and remember that crime. A group of researchers and scientists from our country worked for more than seven months to find all the evidence. Other information and subsequent investigations corroborated the suspicions and they achieved the strongest scientific results that confirmed it. In April 1981, an epidemic was confirmed, which underlies in a disguised way with other diseases that circulated in the country, such as influenza A, 
rubella, and menin meningitis. In that month, the unfortunate death of several children in the uh, Bularte neighborhood in Havana, the capital of the country. For the month of May, the island's health services, researchers from the National Institute of Hygiene, Epidemiology and Microbiology in Spanish abbreviated INHEM, and the Pedro Curie Institute of Tropical Medicine, abbreviated in Spanish IPK, established accurate diagnosis, corroborated with reference strains and antibodies from the uh, Center of Disease Control in Atlanta, determining that it was the disease called dengue from the stereotype 2 in its variant of hemorrhagic dengue and with shock syndrome. Necessary background to know. In 1972, using about 2,500 serum samples taken for polio research in Cuba, a study is carried out by the scientific staff of the National Institute of Hygiene, Epidemiology, and Microbiology of the country with a view to knowing what epidemiological situation existed in relation to dengue, a pathology absent in our health field. This work resulted in the following. The Cuban population, for the most part, did not have dengue antibodies, which corresponded to the epide epidemiological situation. There was only a slight level of specific antibodies to this pathology in a group of people over 30 years of age. From these results, it could be concluded that in Cuba, no dengue was circulating and that possibly the last infection had occurred between 1944 and 1946, judging by the levels of antibodies detected in the and the existing epidemiological history. Subtitle, third meeting of the Scientific Advisory Committee on Dengue of the Pan American Health Organization, abbreviated OPS in Spanish. In May 1974, the third, meeting, the third meeting of Dungi Scientific Advisory Committee of the Pan American Health Organization, actually, uh, it is actually um, uh, abbreviated PAHO, P-A-H-O in uh, English, chaired by the North American scientist, Dr. Philip Russell, who was an actual PAHO official, in which six specialists from the United States of America participated, including Dr. Charles Henry Kalisher, who was also serving as a consultant to PAHO. On July 26, 1974, PAHO sent the draft of the meeting's final report to Cuba for review. The Cuban party replied with objection to the first paragraph on page 9, where it was stated that, we'll carry out a new dengue survey in Cuba with the help of PAHO and, control, and the Control Center of Diseases in Atlanta, that's a Spanish, sort of a Spanish, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in, in Atlanta. Despite the Cuban refusal and given the goodwill that has always been, that has always characterized the country towards international organizations, on April 18, 1975, Cuba um, received Dr. Kalisher to take uh, the dungi, to take a second dungi survey after the Cubans had already done it. It should be noted that Dr. Kalisher, despite his scientific career, this gentleman uh, had worked, uh, has worked at Fort Collins, which is known as a scientific military research center belonging to the United States uh, of America Navy. During the work of this North American specialist in Cuba, the scientists and technicians who collaborated with him, they observed some inappropriate attitudes of a scientist with a similar mission and functions. For their work on serological studies in Cuba brought with it antigens, reference strains of dengue virus 2 and 3. Inexplicably, dengue 3 antigen did not have the required titers and, quote, only could, uh, they could only use Dungi 3. It was precisely this stereotype that circulated in Cuba in 1981. In the end, his work was only based on looking for antibodies to this specific uh, stereotype. In other words, he was getting ready for a bio-warfare attack. He also tried to work with the strains of yellow fever, but that 
which was prevented. Another antigen that he brought, if it was of interest to the Cuban side to work on and for him to leave it, and in, re and in retaliation against the denial about yellow fever, he refused and took it away. In other words, he wouldn't leave anything, any, any evidence that he was basically there to a plan A, uh, hopefully he was hoping ye yellow fever and dengue fever attack. Uh, and it is, a, it is good to point out those of us who have investigated the background and history of bioterrorism precisely, dengue stereotype 02, which is used as a medium for biological weapons and for which the Army of the United States has, since before 1979, a vaccine with attenuated virus for the protection of its troops. At the end of his work in our country, Dr. Kalacher concluded with the same results as the delegation from Cuba had exhibited in Colombia. He warned that no later than two years we would have dengue in Cuba. <laughs> His prognosis came true and in 1977 he entered Cuba and there was an epidemic of dengue stereotype 1 that affected between uh, that year and until 1981 no less than 5 million people and 10 deaths. Talk about foreshadowing. It is no less true that the American scientist obtained the necessary information on the situation of this disease in Cuba, the vulnerability of our population to a possible outbreak, and the chaotic situation, the control of the plague of mosquitoes of the Aedes aegypti species, a species that transmits dengue fever and other diseases, which due to the economic blockade of the United States against Cuba, they had stopped buying all the pesticides necessary for their control. Side note, so the United States made sure that the Cubans could not control dengue fever and mosquitoes by embargoing any imports uh, into the country uh, to do so. After having done his work in Cuba, Dr. Charles Callisher continued to express his interest and update on dengue situation in our country. He showed constant concern because Cuban scientists will provide information on works related to that disease. In order to achieve this, he invited our scientists collab to collaborate in specialized publications, uh, um, American publications, suggesting topics such as new or renewed laboratory techniques, state and situation of the 80s Egypti mosquito plague in the country, unusual clinical manifestations ab uh, about dengue infections, special bleeding phenomena, surveys and administrative actions related to dengue or yellow fever and others. <laughs> in other words, he was trying to get all the information he could from them after setting them up for dengue and, and uh, um, hopefully yellow fever. There were several Cuban scientists who showed to the commission that investigated dengue epidemic in 1981, the letters sent to the, um, by this scientist. So he was actually sending letters to uh, Cuban uh, scientists asking for this information in, under the guise of international cooperation. God. Once the epidemic was declared on the island in 1981, he became interested in obtaining patient, uh, uh, patient information, isolated strains uh, and reference strains used for diagnosis in order to be able to expand and collaborate in investigations into the outbreak. Yeah, sure. Behind these interests, there were other purposes that later were discovered. According to a report published in September 1980 by the San Juan Laboratory Center for Disease Control of Puerto Rico, in this place, serological studies were carried out on Cuban immigrants who left the island through the port of Mariel in that year to know the levels of antibodies, especially dengue, trying to update the epidemiological information of our country regarding this disease. How much interest in dengue in Cuba? Good question. Months before dengue hemorrhagic fever epidemic broke out on the island, specialists from the spe uh, 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 doctor services of the Naval Forces of the United States of America carried out a vaccination in the facilities um, uh, at Guantanamo Naval Base, you know, the little divot of, of land that the United States still occupies illegally and refuses to return to, to Cuba, carried out a vaccination in the facilities 
from the Guantanamo Naval Base illegally occupied in our country. In other words, you know, that's what he's saying in Spanish. At that time, they worked at base, base 91. Oh, at the base, 91 Cuban workers entered and leaving it. So the U.S. was using 91 Cubans to come across their established border of, uh, between Guantanamo, Air, uh, Guantanamo Naval Base and the rest of Cuba. In the interviews with some of them we met, it was not said against what disease. In other words, they were getting vaccinated, but they didn't know which. It was very suggestive that during the epidemic in Cuba, they did not come from their medical services to care about their staff. At the base, not a single case was reported. As we have said above, the U.S. military has a vaccine with attenuated dung virus stereotype 2 to protect its army. On the other hand, and very important also, before, during, and after the epidemic, the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, through a network of infiltrated agents in Cuba, requested information about Dungi. A very special request for information to know where we would buy pesticides, resources, and uh, motorcycle backpacks to eliminate the mosquito. Behind every information obtained, the blocking actions came to obtain everything that was necessary. In other words, the United States infiltrated Cuba with CIA agents, trying to find out what Cuba was trying to do to stop the uh, uh, epidemics and all the other, I'm sure all the other bioweapon attacks that the CIA and the U.S. military has been engaging in and, and certainly continues to do so. Uh, so that they could stop them from trying to buy anything on the, in the international market that would uh, reduce the death and destruction of Cuba and the people. It's genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity. Behind, and that's the United States, NATO, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, your Anglo land, the West. Uh, just one example is enough, and it is that motorcycle backpacks for fumigation, all purchase requests were rejected and, could, and they could only buy in Japan and look for them urgently on uh, Cubana de Aviación airplanes. In other words, they had to go out and scrounge for anything that they could get uh, using, using their own airplanes to fly to buy. Uh, the equipment uh, to, uh, to try to reduce the death and destruction. What could not be imagined, neither the CIA nor his government nor the government, is that 27 of those infiltrated agents were, <laughs> were agents of the Cuban security that kept the state and party, the Communist Party in Cuba, aware of all the actions of the enemy. All this work was made public in 1987 and they were exposed in the Cuban media by the agents themselves. I remember that. There was an article about that. <clears throat> anyway, so the U.S. thought they were, you know, screwing the Cubans, but the, screw, the Cubans were actually screwing the Americans because they were double agents, <clears throat> and so the Cubans knew everything was going on. Subtitle, Diagnosis and Study of the Epidemiological Chain. Once the diagnosis has been made, and the causal agent of the epidemic has been determined by the scientists of the National Institutes of Hygiene, Epidemiology, and Microbiology, and the Pedro Curie Institute of Tropical Medicine, abbreviated IPK, proceeds to investigate the epidemiological chain to reach the origin and the entry of the virus into the country. And of course, if you don't know, Cuba has one of the most advanced biological, uh, medical, vaccine, uh, um, uh, medical equipment, medical, I mean, they're, they are more advanced than, than uh, uh, many countries uh, uh, that, that uh, you might, might imagine. It's just unbelievable. All right, the, the study was carried out with all rigor, applying all epidemiological techniques and procedures, existing among them the physical checkup of the surveyed patients, clinical analysis of the symptoms presented in the period that the disease lasted, study of the medical records of the patients, documentary verification of the exact date on which they had fallen ill, using the charge sheets of the hospitals where they were treated, medical records, admission, 
controls and attendance controls. In the case of worker patients, taking serum samples from the blood of surveyed patients to the serological and di diagnostic tests through the presence of specific antibodies to the disease, differentiated diagnosis in the study of other con con concomitant pathological phenomena and or comorbidities. In other words, they know what they're doing. From the results obtained, the initial focus of the epidemic in uh, the La Capitale, in, uh, La, in the Baluarte area near the Jose Marti International Airport. In it, there is a primary school, hence the affectation of several children and the unfortunate death of several of them. Thank you, uh, Uranglo Land, uh, for killing uh, Cuban children. I'm sure that you all are, uh, I'm sure, that, you know, Westerners can feel very, very, very proud of doing that. Similarly, it was determined that the index patient of this, of this focus had fallen ill in the second fortnight of December 1980, from which other cases arose in late December and early the month of January 81. In these cases, it was not possible to determine the origin of the phenomenon and they had not been linked to previously affected patients. In, subtitle, Incredible Determination of Appearance of Two Other Initial Focuses. For any connoisseur of epidemiology, it is logical to think that as a general rule and with rare exceptions, an epidemic outbreak develops from an initial focus and one or more index cases. What, a, what was strange about this epidemic? With the sagacity and the level of our scientists have always shown, Dr. Angel Goyanchia, a specialist of, res of the Respiratory Disease Laboratory Department of Virology, who directed the control and study program of influenza at the National Institute of Hygiene, Epidemiology, and Microbiology, provided invaluable information. Uh, 100, uh, they, uh, an amount of 139 were paired, I assume that must be the, the serological, you know, matchup, which meant 87% of, uh, of those obtained for the influenza survey and had been negative to this disease. It was strange that those patients who had suffered from a nonspecific virus had negative results to the analyses carried out. The patients had not become ill during the time of dengue epidemic until the time they were surveyed and blood samples were taken for the serological studies. Most were from the provinces of uh, Cienfuegos and Camagüey and from patients who had fallen ill in the second half of the month of December 1980 and early 1981. These provinces were those of high morbidity and mortality um, after Havana. What diseases had affected them then? A small group of patients were selected, taking into account the most distant in time. None had contact, no relationship with each other or between the three provinces, Havana, Cienfuegos, and uh, Camagüey. On these last two provinces had in common that and the cases were in places located in the southwest of two international air corridors that cross the island and where on certain days they arrive uh, to fly over Cuba more than 400 planes. So this is the corridor where the United States illegally flies airplanes over um, Cuba. It should be noted that most of the rare and suspicious cases that constitute um, assaults of bioterrorism against Cuba appear under the international air corridors and in the vicinity of Guantanamo, North American naval base. The results of the serological studies carried out were very suggestive. All of them had tested positive for dengue too. From what it was possible to conclude that, like in the case of the Boulevard distribution in Havana, they were infected in the second half of December. It was also determined that the infected mosquitoes were thrown from airplanes through the air corridors, a hypothesis that was demonstrated in 1996 when it was seen by the crew of, an Ameri of, an air of a Cuban commercial airplane that an American airplane was spraying a substance on the island and a month later it was discovered that it was a pest 
to affect several important crops related to the feeding, to, well, to the food, I guess, in the town. Uh, the article by Tom Thomas Powell at the end uh, talks about this. This use of aviation to spread germs and chemical weapons has been recognized by the people themselves. U.S. biological warfare strategists suffice it to mention a few of them. Dr. Theodore Rosebury, former head of the Airborne Infection Bureau at the Biological Warfare Experiment at Fort Detrick. Uh, he wrote in a book, Plague or Peace, published in 1945, 1949. He exposes, quote, the center had not stopped working tirelessly after the First World War. Dispersion by airplanes of infectious germs that cause contamination by airborne dissemination of insects. It is of the greatest value. Another sinister personality from North America's chemical and biological warfare activity, Mr. George W. Merck, of course, the, of Merck Pharma, president and director of the House of Merck, in other words, Merck, Inc., special advisor to the Ministry of War and the director of the Committee of American Biological Warfare, also argued, um, I think Ministry of War means Department of Defense. Actually, back then, it was still the Department, the Department of War. That's right. It, uh, uh, it was uh, changed later. As part of the experiments, valuable observations had been made on the properties and behavior of air loaded with disease-producing germs. For this work, perfected exact methods for the production and measurements of microorganism clouds to determine the viability of the organisms in these clouds and to study the factors to which they were subjected to the movements of air laden with pathogens. End of quote by a bioterrorist scientist, Dr. Theodore Roseberry, which he wrote in a book called Plague or Peace, 1949. Uh, if you believe, you know, that the United States stopped doing bio, bio weapon uh, 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 development back in the 70s, like they promised, um, you're living in la la land. The demonstration of three initial outbreak, I'm continuing with Dr. Ariel's article, after that quote from the American uh, bioterrorist. The demonstration of three initial outbreaks in that epidemic was another suggestive element of, an of a biological aggression. The infected mosquitoes were introduced in distant places, one in the west, Havana, one in the center of the island, Cien Cienfuegos, and others in Camagüey in the east of the country so that all of Cuba would be infected simultaneously and the whole country will be affected. Here is the immeasurable value of observation performed by Dr. Angel Goyenchea. America, you're really good at killing people. I mean, you're just so good at just exterminating people. That's what, that's what America does best, the West does best. Subtitle, Who and Where the Mosquitoes Were Prepared. In the, arc, in the article, quote, The Incubator of Death, end of quote, published in the USSR magazine Litera Turnaya Gazeta in 1982 by Iona Andronov, denounces that according to the accusations by Abdul Aziz Danishar, editor of the Kabul News Times paper, uh, uh, was quoted as saying, so this, uh, this uh, Arab or, pa I think it's pa yeah, Pakistani, no, Kabul, Kabul is Afghan, I'm sorry, uh, the, an, Af an Afghan newspaper, an Afghan doctor, um, I'm sorry, an Afghan editor was quoted as saying, American biologists recruited by the CIA claiming to fight malaria fever breed in the city of Lahore in Pakistan, a particularly virulent species of mosquito that contaminates victims lethally. So there's, a, there's one of uh, the United States' many, many hundreds of biological warfare labs, this one in Pakistan, to create killer mosquitoes. Likewise, Pakistani journalists from the weekly magazine Viewpoint referred to the author of the same article about the activities carried out there by microbiologists from 
Maryland University, the Terrapins on the football field. These are listed in Lahore in the laboratory by the name of the Pakistani Medical Research Center, the PMEC, and they are led by CIA, CIA officials in that country. There you go. Even the residents of that city have been affected by the experiments carried out there with the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes and others. Lovely. According to the source itself, shortly before the dengue attack against Cuba, in the same Lahore, Lahore laboratory, Lahore is a city in Pakistan, uh, had received the order from the United States of America that they should ensure above all mosquitoes contaminated for the subversive actions of the CIA in Cuba. Uh, and uh, an own official of the PMRC, Dr. Nalin, told a reporter from the Literaturnaya Gazeta the following, Our task it consists of obtaining new super mosquitoes. For this, we cross different species, we subject them to radiation, and apply the advan advances of genetic engineering. Our super mosquitoes are called to exterminate the centers that spread malaria fever, Ours will be stronger, more fruitful, and lively. Yeah. Subtitle, noted terrorist on Cuban origin, uh, of Cuban origin acknowledges his participation in this bioterrorist action. Three years after the dengue attack against our people, on September 11th, 1984, the United States Press published a very illuminating story about the introduction in 1980 of dengue in Cuba. The notorious counter-revolutionary terrorist of Cuban origin, Eduardo Arosena, leader of the terrorist group Omega-7, they're the ones that blew, the, uh, blew up the airplane, the Cuban airplane flying to Miami, killed I think 80 people. Ah, they're just communists. Um, let me see, and linked to the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America, is accused of murder in 1980 of the Cuban diplomat before the United Nations, Felix Garcia Rodriguez, and to participate in the planting of a dozen bombs in the United States of America. In their statements by him in that trial before the Federal Court of New York, he said, quote, the mission of the group headed by me was to obtain certain germs to introduce them into Cuba to start what was called chemical warfare, end of quote. This is stated in the document, uh, Federal City Court of New York, page 2189-1984, Exhibit 2, FBI, New York, 185-1009. Later, referring to the same mission, he reiterates, part of the objective was that before me, ahead, ahead of me, there was another ship with a different mission, a mission to be carried out within the, territory, the Cuban territory, as I stated before. Read Thomas Powell's article below. He gets into all this. I mean, they were they were using ships, you know, to uh, infect Cuba with um, uh, biological uh, and entomological uh, weapons. The strongest scientific evidence, as stated at the beginning of the investigation. Through the information provided by the organization, the Pan American Organization of Health, dengue stereotype two did not circulate in the world uh, uh, until 1970. He says since 1972, maybe starting in 1972. I have to go back and check the Spanish. But it would be missing strong. But it would be missing stronger scientific proof. Canada has Canada. Cuba has developed medical sciences of the highest level with a number of renowned scientists, international scientists. During the years 1995 and 1997, scientists from the Institute for Research in Tropical Medicine, Pedro Curi, led by the Doctor of Science and Professor Guadalupe Guzman, were obtaining dengue stereotype two strains that circulated in the world in the last years prior to the epidemic. The, they conducted a genomic study of dengue fever, uh, dengue virus strains that had circulated in 1981, equivalent to comparing, quote, fingerprints, end of quote, of viruses in their relationship and not with others. The study in comparison of the nucleotide sequence in the DNA of the strains 
showed that it was not similar to any of those that had circulated in America nor in the world. But science cannot be left with that single result. It had to be demonstrated scientifically from where uh, the virus came from. In August 2014, the archives of Virology magazine, the original, the official organ of the virology section of the International Union of Microbiological Societies, included in its pages the article entitled, quote, First Epidemic of Dungy Hemorrhagic Fever in the Americas, 1981, a New Knowledge About the Causative Agent. Its main author is the Doctor of Science, Rosemary Rodriguez Roche, researcher at the Institute of Tropical Medicine, Pedro Curi, IPK, and she was awarded the grand prize for this result at the 2015 annual health competition. The study offers irrefutable scientific evidence that corroborates the accusation made by Cuba. In the 1990s, the IPK, in collaboration with related institutions in other countries, carried out studies to characterize the strain that caused dung, dungy hemorrhagic fever epidemic in 1981. The result showed that the strain causing the 1981 epidemic was very similar to that of the New Guinea C, letter C, laboratory isolated in 1944. The first time dengue tooth was isolated in the world. New Guinea C 1944 is the prototype strain of dengue 2 and it exists in almost all institutions where it, where it is um, used to work on the issue of dengue. Taking into account that the amplification and sequencing, sequencing systems of the genome are very sensitive, they argue that the amplification of an unwanted virus, such as consequence of the inadequate manipulation of the viral isolates, this is how uh, Dr. Rosemary Rodriguez um, uh, stated it. She said that as viruses mutate, accumulated changes in their genome year after year during the replication process in humans and mosquitoes with a frequency known Evolutionary scholars said that if the virus circulating in Cuba in 19, 1981 looks so much like the isolated one from 1944, that is, it had very few mutations. It was then a contamination with the strain from a laboratory. It was not actually a virus that was circulated in nature, but a laboratory strain, reveals this expert. In other words, they took the 1944 New Guinea sea a virus to contaminate, which is used in laboratories to work uh, with dengue fever. It was, the confer it was the confirmation of the crime. Therefore, it was a strain that had been kept in a laboratory for years. Once again, Cuban scientists and researchers demonstrated that the accusations of Cuba and our Commander-in-Chief Fidel Castro on the biological war aggressions against Cuba is not a fallacy but strong evidence based on constitutional science. And again, go read, just take a look at the biological, the, the Global Online Library. It's all free. Read uh, uh, Thomas Powell's uh, uh, article. And there are others just uh, on my website, uh, on uh, just Google uh, or search um, a bio, bio, bio W, and you'll get bio weapon, bio war, etc. I've got tons of articles. It's what the West does best: exterminating enemies. Consequences of this aggression. Recognized by the Pan American and World Health Organizations, the epidemic of hemorrhagic dengue in Cuba in 1981 is unprecedented in the history of this disease and it has been the most serious and significant recorded in the world, reaching the figure of 344,203 people, 10,312 of them serious, 116,143 hospitalized in three months, 24,000 with hemorrhages, 158 deceased, of which 101 were children who were sacrificed for, a, for Western empire, global capitalism, yeah. 
The epidemic had a record number of 11,400 new, new cases reported in one day in, in July 1981. The resulting economic losses were estimated at 103 million, 41 million in medical care, 5 million in wages, 14 million in production losses, and 43 million dollars in mosquito control. During the course of the epidemic, the United States of America economically blocked all marketing efforts for pesticides, larvicides, and other resources necessary to combat it. Well, of course, they want to kill the entire population. They want to destroy the Cuban government. They want to destroy the Cuban Communist Party. They want to destroy their way of life and their socialism and their communism and their solidarity and the fact that they're not whores for Washington. Many products had to be paid for three and a half times more than the cost of the product itself. That's when like, they had to fly to Japan to buy backpacks to spray on motorcycles. Multiple efforts were made by the Cuban government with a view to eliminating the epidemic. It was even necessary to convert schools into hospitals to cover the hospitalization of the most seriously ill and cut the epidemiological chain through isolation. On October 10th of the same year, the last case was reported, leaving behind the most significant action of biological terrorism carried out against our country by the United States. In 1982, an article published in Covert Action Magazine recognized the 1981 dengue epidemic in Cuba as an aggression by the United States. End of story. And again, you've got the, bio, uh, the biological, uh, the Bioweapon Truth Commission Global Online Library. You've got Dr. Ariel's book, you know, uh, he, he's offering it for free. Just download it for free off my website. Uh, he sent us a, he sent a wonderful uh, update about COVID in, in, in the year 2020. And uh, read Thomas Powell's, uh, and, and, uh, and I will list a couple of others that I mentioned in this uh, piece and this readout. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. China Rising Radio, Sign of Land, and China Tech News Flash signing out. Please make a contribution to all of my hard work. Thank you.